Okay, this is going to be the last concept we cover for Series 3B, and it's a good place to end things because it sort of wraps things up for us, okay? And if you've been following Series 3B, you'll have a pretty good idea of what we're going to talk about because all it is is just introducing a couple of new terms in our vocabulary. One is the remainder theorem, and the other one is the factor theorem. And the factor theorem is just an extension of the remainder theorem. And uh, the reason that these two things are important is because they allow us, they're one of the tools that we use to be able to find ourselves on a function. Okay. You can think about it this way. The reason that we create functions, that we have models, is because we want to find out how you know, something in the real world, in the imagined world, uh, in, in the perceived world works, right? So one of the first things we need to do is to figure out where we are on a function. And that is exactly what the remainder theorem tells us, okay? So just imagine if you had a coordinate system. This is our x, and this is our y. And our y is basically our f of x, right? Let's throw a function on this thing. What the remainder theorem does, it allows us to go on the x-axis, anywhere on the x-axis, and either move up or down and hit the function, and it tells us where we are on that function. So what it does, it tells us, we pick a particular x value, and through, through our evaluation of the function, we find out where we are on the function, what our f of x becomes on the function. Okay? So, Let's go to another wall and just put this, uh, you know, lay, that, lay, lay this thing down and see what it looks like mathematically terminology. So what does the remainder theorem tell us? The remainder theorem states the following, okay? If you have a function f of x, which is a polynomial function, let's say you have f of x, which is a polynomial function, if you take this polynomial function, if you take f of x and divide x minus 1 into it, and x minus a into it, where a is the element of the real number set. And we already know, you know what the real number set is from ser uh, series 1, right? We talked a lot about this. So if you take a polynomial function and divide x minus a into the polynomial function, the remainder theorem states the following. If you set x minus a equal to 0, and solve for this, you're going to get x is equal to a. The remainder theorem states that if you take your a and sub it in for all the x's in your polynomial function, whatever this function may be, your remainder is f of a. So your remainder becomes f of a. So f of a becomes your remainder. And what is the remainder? And again, we talked a lot about this in series 3b, and specifically when we got into polynomial long division and synthetic division, your remainder is what your y value is, right? So the remainder theorem tells you what your function is, what your y is, for a specific x value, okay? Let's go, let's go take a look at an example and see how this works out when we, you know, when we actually have a function and we plug in a value for x. So let's say we have the following function. Now if you've been following series 3b, you've already recognized this function. This is a quadratic function, trinomial. It graphs a parabola, right? Let's say we wanted to take this polynomial and divide it by x minus 1. So you want to take this polynomial and divide it by x minus 1. What you're going to do is what we just talked about, right? You set this equal to 0. Solve for x, which means grab this guy, bring it over, so you got x is equal to 1. Right? So what you're going to do now is take your 1 value here, 4x, and sub it in everywhere where you have an x in your function. So you're going to evaluate this function for f of 1. Ah, oh, quick go. Oh. <laughs> $175 fine, you know? <laughs> So what you're doing is subbing in x is equal to 1 wherever you see x in the function. So this becomes f of 1 is equal to 1 squared plus 5 times 1 plus 6. 1 squared is 1, 5 times 1 is 5 plus 6, it equals 12. So this thing becomes f of 1 is equal to 12.
So what, what, what you have here now is, is f of 1 is equal to 12. What is this thing? This is just a coordinate on our function, on our parabola. So this is your x value, and that's your y. So this just becomes 1 and 12. So what you're doing is, is moving along your x axis. When you hit 1, you go up to see where your function is. When you hit your function, wherever the function is, you read off your y value, and that's, that becomes f of 1. That becomes what your function is, right? That's what your remainder is, right? So it's basically giving you an output for an input. Now let's, t let's, let's go graph this thing and see what it looks like graphically. So, so what does all this look like when we graph it, when we take f of x? So what does it look like when we take f of x is equal to x squared plus 5x plus 6 and graph it and solve for a specific x value? Now, we've already graphed things like this in series 3a, right? And don't worry about how, how this all graphs because we're going to talk about this a lot more in the future. What you want to focus on right now is the remainder theorem or what it's telling us. Now, I know that this graphs a parabola as a quadratic function, and it has x-intercepts of negative 2 and negative 3. So the graph of this looks like the following. If we've got our Cartesian coordinate system here, right? We have an x-intercept of negative 3 and an x-intercept of negative 2. And this parabola opens up. So what we have, it looks like this. So this is, this is what our function looks like. This guy graphs a parabola that looks like this, right? Now let's say what we want to do is divide this function by x minus 1 or basically evaluate this function and x is equal to 1. So what we do is do exactly what we did in the example, right? We're going to go... We're going to evaluate this thing for x is, e x is equal to 1, right? And we already did this and we know the answer for this is 12. So what does this thing mean? It means that we just plotted a point on our graph, right? We just got a coordinate point, a, a point on our function, right? Which is 1 and 12. If we go to x is equal to 1 and move up until we hit the function, it becomes f of 1. Okay, and that's what we just ended up doing, and that is what the remainder theorem is, right? It gives us an output for a specific input. It tells us what our y is for a specific x value, right? Now, what does the factor theorem tell us? The factor theorem is a special case of the remainder theorem where your remainder is equal to zero. Now, I already know that this function crosses the x-axis at x is equal to negative 2 and x is equal to negative 3, right? So let's say we want to evaluate this function at x is equal to negative 2. So the question would be, evaluate this function at x is equal to negative 2 or divide this fun function by x plus 2, right? What you're going to do is, to find your remainder, to find out what your y is, what you're going to do is sub in x is equal to negative 2 in your function wherever you have the axis, right? So you're going to evaluate that function at x is equal to negative 2. Right? So what we've got here is, when we sub in x is equal to negative 2 for, uh, for x, we've got negative 2 squared, which is going to be 4. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. Plus 6. So what we have here is, 4 minus 10 is negative 6, plus 6 is 0. So f of negative 2, that's supposed to be a 2. So f of negative 2 is 0, right? That's where our function crosses the x-axis, right? Because our y value is 0 for x is negative 2. So what we've done here is plotted another point on the function, which is an x-intercept. And what is an x-intercept? X-intercept is just basically gives us the factors of a function, right? It gives us the zeros, it gives us the roots, right? It gives us the x-intercepts. So this point here is 
right there. It's when x is negative 2 and y is 0, okay? And that is all the remainder theorem and the factor theorem tell us. They're basically tools that we use to find out where we are on a function, right? And they're pretty powerful tools, right? Because all you do, you plug in an x value and find out what your remainder is for the function, and that is your y, okay? And that's basically the remainder theorem and the factor theorem, okay? Hope you guys enjoyed the series. I'll see you guys in the next video.